Well, I I don't it have was. my mic. Oh, hi. Oh, we're live. Hi. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Inside Movies Galore. Uh, we are celebrating two birthdays this month. The first one was myself, but for the this these t uh, two films uh it is septum sims uh, birthday also this month so why don't you tell us what movies you subjected us to this week well um this would be the two movies of uh Monica Ma Puella Magi Monica Magica uh, the first movie being Beginnings and the second movie being Eternal Essentially, these two movies are a retelling of the uh, first season of the show. There was a third movie um, out, but um, we didn't have room to cover that one. But uh, hopefully we'll return to it later on. Um, I was uh, looking at this as kind of a, an interesting two pairing uh, where we'd have uh, our anime discussion of the show and so on, but we kind of have the same people for, for both. So it's going to be uh, very interesting. Uh, if you want to see more nuance and character, definitely go to that one as well. But this, uh, these two movies, they're about these uh, magical girls uh, who are doing their best to take out evil witches in a rather melancholy world. So, uh, well, uh, I guess, uh, why don't we, uh, I guess we'll be repeating some of this stuff, but um, Jake, uh, was this your first time watching the movies? Because I think you actually did watch the movies this time. <laughs> yes, I did. Um, this was not my first time with these movies. Um, I believe I borrowed each one from you previously and watched them. Uh, including the third one. So I've seen them once before. Uh, I did revisit the first two for this um, and watched them immediately on the heels of watching the series. And I did so, I did both time, both of them in the Japanese dub. And I'm now regretting that I did not take the opportunity to watch the series in the English dub so that I could more thoroughly compare because really and truly, the movies are the theatrical cut of the show. It's that's just the simplest way to put it. They are a roughly five hour show pared down to just over four hours. And there's a higher budget with better, crisper animation. A couple of new, a new theme song. And that's pretty much, it's the show repackaged. So for all intents and purposes, I've seen these three additional times because I've seen the show three times. <laughs> um, and I've read the manga. So I've, I've seen this story several times. And um, it's... A good story. It's a really good story. We had a good discussion last night because there is a lot here to talk about. Um, but there is a very good reason I do not own these movies. And that is because they're Anaplex released, which means they're expensive as friggin' hell. And they're the same as the show. So there is no reason to pay 50, 60 bucks a pop for something that I already own. So, uh, but it was fun to revisit them and look. And honestly, it is a good way to introduce the series to someone who doesn't want, who's scared off by the idea of watching a series. Because as an as a, a adaptation of the series, they're pretty good. They don't skip too much. And it's just there's so little added that you really kind of wonder why they bothered. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Uh, well, uh, why don't we hit Roger? Uh, is this your first time uh, 
I don't know if you managed to hit up the movies this time, but if you did, was this your first time uh, seeing them? No, this uh, this happens to be the fourth or fifth time I've seen them, seen both movies. Uh, I kind of got them, you know, when they came out. Uh, they were Japanese only. Then found a, of course, a torrented uh, the English English dub or subtitled version of it, so I was able to enjoy the movies. And of course, later on, I bought the movies, you know, at both both import and and domestic. Uh, you know, it's just that. You no, know, how do you how do you really distill a great a great show down to its component parts and still and still make a great movie? It's kind of hard to do as I've, as I've seen many many times done before. Um, the Madoka series, I think they really did succeed in making it happen. You know, there are going to be some issues with people saying, "Oh, they're taking all these parts out, you know, their favorite part out." But you know, you know, these are the theatrical version, and some stuff will be taken out. But from my point of view, I think they really did a good job. Uh, like Jake was saying, uh, the animation quality was higher. You had some more added in, uh, you know, scenes, some uh, just some different viewpoints from Kube, and some more little deeper uh, secrets given out that was not revealed in the TV show. So uh, overall, I think there's a it's easy, these are easily uh, book book you know ends to my Madoka collection. So you know, I, I just consider all the same show. All right. Uh, well, um, let's see here. So, Dave, uh, I know you didn't have time for the movies, uh, but uh, tell us uh, again about your first uh, introduction to the show, uh, first impression. Well, I, uh, having time to mull it over while I haven't been watching it, um, as a series, and from what I understand, the movies are a truncated version of the, uh, the series, just basically repackaged with one extra song <laughs> from Jake's uh, telling of it. Um, but as I'm going forward in the uh, series, I'm starting to understand uh, a little bit more about, you know, the uh, the different characters, like the fact that Hamoka uh, or Hamora. Uh, <laughs> well, Hamadika, yep, Hamadika or whatever. Um, she's a time traveler. <laughs> And basically, what she's been uh, trying to do—they'll be Homura, yeah, Homura. Homura. Um, she's been trying to uh, go back and uh, and try to save Madoka through the entire series, you know. And once you understand that, um, then it, it it falls into place a little bit more, um, and you don't hate her as much, um, but. <laughs> By the way, spoilers. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, for those of you who haven't watched the series or the movies, uh, it might be good to uh, check those out and then come back just because uh, some of this does rely on uh, certain surprise moments. Both of these, if you're watching them on the first go. So it's uh, just a little advice on that one. I did think that some of the characters got a little bit more of a backstory, like uh, like the one with the preach uh, 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 the preachers, uh, um, uh, the pre uh, preacher that was the father uh, who uh, evidently she wanted uh, uh, the one magical girl wa uh, wanted her father to be listened to, you know, and that was her wish that her father got more of an audience, you know, and uh, things of that nature. I did dislike mommy dying at first. Um, and I, I guess I, I got to see it to its bitter end. Uh, I'll probably be watching it like when I'm not talking here, <laughs> uh, but um it's an interesting experience. I mean, you got you got the different uh, 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 the different dramas uh, uh, surrounding the different girls, and at first, Madoka is kind of like as you guys put it, a blank slate character, and as she 
progresses, you start to see her begin to think of herself as more of the, uh, than what uh, what she is. And I guess I'm getting to that point. <laughs> but um, there, the uh, the progression for her is slow, and um, if you're not if you're not used to having um, having characters not have good guidance characters, like halfway through, uh, like part way through a show, like it, 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 to, it, to me, it was like okay. At first, it was like, what's the point of uh, these girls going on when their main focal girl? Uh, that was guiding them suddenly dies. And then you got this one that seems to just not want them to continue. And then the other just seems to be, uh, uh, be periodically fighting them all the time. So, uh, so it's like, uh, I think a lot of it, I think, I think a lot of it, Dave, uh, is, is really based on the thought that yes, uh, these girls are naive, uh, and their naivety really, even mommy's naivety, uh, leads to their downfall. And that is a, uh, if, if they had somebody who is truly, truly, well, they actually did, but uh, it was proven later on that they wouldn't have believed her even if she had uh, warned them about what was to come. They're, so, they're basically bumbling along and, <clears throat> and, try, and figuring out how to be magical girls without any guidance at all in this world of witches and familiars, you know, and, and they were sucked into the world for a very sh short period. And then um, because of said, you know, magical girl that died, I believe uh, they both eventually just kind of became magical girls because, you know, while they'd already been led uh, uh, led and shown this world, now one girl just advanced to uh, uh, doing it, uh, doing it to help, you know, the boy she loved, you know, and it, it, I mean. I guess <clears throat> I really need the time to uh, to enjoy this, and I just didn't. <laughs> uh, but I'm enjoying it for w what it is. So. I'm just uh, making sure I get to see. I'm done with one. I guess I'm starting to have a little bit more of a different opinion now that I'm actually being able to like sit down and watch it. So just got to force myself to do it. <laughs> I'm good now. So crawl, uh, you'll have to, you'll have to unmute yourself there. Um, there was, there's a little, uh, there, uh, was this your first time uh, checking out the series? Well, I know it's not, but you know what I mean? <laughs> Um, are you sure there was noise here? Okay. Anyways, um, well, uh, no, no, first time I've, uh, well, I watched the series once. I didn't watch the movies because you said they were the same thing and, uh, except, uh, you had to read the story, you know, um, which I really love reading my movies. Um, not. <laughs> so, um, just went with the story, um. I uh, I enjoyed the story. I, I really liked it. Um, and some of us liked more uh, right from the beginning. <laughs> um, as a matter of fact, best character. But uh, that's that's beside the point. Um, yeah, I, I I really enjoyed it. Thought it was well done. Like I said, like I said before, um, the artwork is not my favorite. Um, it grew. Most of it grew on me, um, so I liked it better than my first time, uh, first a couple episodes. Uh, the Labyrinth, I didn't like at all. Uh, it really bugged me. Um, 
Oh, I can't really say too much why it just just did just I don't know just annoyed me. I uh, didn't really like that, but overall the those uh, the story was really good. Um, a lot of it I figured out ahead of time. Uh, most of it. Um, this is the first time I've ever watched any kind of magic girl. Um, I I guess I've heard of Sailor Moon, but I didn't know she was a magic girl until uh, last night. So. Um, I am not a watcher of, of, of this kind of um, stuff, so uh, it was new to me. But uh, just from watching uh, other stuff, it, I, I guess I uh, figure out things quick, uh, even if I've never seen a uh, magic girl. But uh, it, it was it was enjoyable. There was still a couple twists I hadn't figured out yet, so um, that was good. Uh, yeah, I, I, I liked it, so... That's my first impression. All right. Uh, well, I was actually first uh, introduced to the movies. Uh, well, when I was hearing about the third film coming out, because I'd finished the series and I was curious as to what happens after and the third movie takes place after. So I found uh, on, uh, I did find on eBay, the uh, Japanese copies of the first two films grouped with the third film on blu-ray for i want to say it was either 25 or 30 bucks and i was like you know what i could do much worse than that and the uh, japanese uh movies were uh, had actually been region free because anaplex makes them region free because they assume that you uh are just going to uh well they just assume that you're probably going to try and get them from japan so I was able to get those copies so I could watch the third film. So I was kind of glad to give myself a refresher watching the first two films and uh, renewing my, uh, what I saw of the series again. Um, to me, I, I did like the animation uh, budget increase, essentially, that we got from the, uh, from going from the, the series to this. It, it was a bit higher quality. You could tell that throughout and because of the length because these are movies that are like two hours and some change a piece that's that's pretty hefty and that's enough to really uh kind of uh keep it up you still get like i'd say you get 90 percent of the story beats in place uh watching these two so still quite fun they still hold up pretty well for me and it's kind of cool. So I got to watch them in the Japanese, and I got to watch the English dub for the first time of the series. So it was kind of cool watching them both ways. But uh, that was my first impression. So why don't we go ahead into uh, the particular movie plots. I'm not going to try and run as badly into uh, the characters. Real, real, real quick, follow-up here to my commentary that I had forgotten all about and i just happened to bring up a and n honestly by mistake and they had a review of this item even though it's a year old it was somehow a recent review um but apparently last year they did do anaplex of america did do a 10th anniversary repackaging of all three films. Yeah. And, yep. and it's currently on right stuff for 60 bucks. So, okay. They're not as expensive as I thought they were. And they're, yeah. well, as they were, they were expensive as hell. And, uh, well, and the dub actually, uh, is on those, I believe. Yeah. It does because, have an English dub. Yeah. And the English dub is also on the uh, original, mm -hmm. uh, Blu-ray release of the series that they did. Right. Stateside. So, you know, mm -hmm. and it might be worth getting us a repackaging like that. Uh, yeah. One of these days, I think I might change it out. Though there is something cool about having the original Japanese. It is, yeah. Discs, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm actually tempted by this set now. And the, and the <laughs> menus I, I are like to say one more thing, too. Um, I have not seen the third movie, but I, I'm, I'm thinking of watching it because um, I said I like the I like be the and, Be ready uh, to be angry. <laughs> it is. I, I, I like the story, so it, it'd be nice to uh, find out more what happened well, with the with the girls. You get to see something more resembling of the cover of the first film <laughs> that we have here. Um, but any case, uh, 
the story is about uh, this uh, young girl, uh, Madaka, and uh, her regular school life. She has this dream about the city being destroyed, and she is with this other girl uh, as the city is being destroyed. And she ends up waking up from this dream as if by a deadly premonition, which we find out later definitely uh, is a little bit more than just a dream. And when she goes to school, she finds out that this other magic girl that she had seen in a dream is actually transferring into her class. While she is, and not long after that, she ends up running into this cute little uh, critter, this innocent little critter named QB, who's being chased by the other magical girl who's trying to kill it. And uh, this cute little innocent creature, uh, she saves it with the help of her friend Sayaka, who is the blue-haired uh, character there. And they are told... Contract? Yeah, they are told by about the <laughs> magical girls. And also, of course, Mommy. Uh, and then, of course, uh, and about the witches, which they also managed to stumble right upon, if you, if you look at it, not long after picking up QB. But they are saved by Mommy, who is the uh, blonde down in the um, in the corner there. And they get introduced to the idea that if you make a contract with QB, who is this, uh, again, the cute little innocent creature who would never cause any problems, uh, <laughs> they, can get a, uh, they can get a wish granted, any wish that they want. And in exchange, they become magical girls. Contract? They must, uh, they must then seek out witches and take the witches down uh, to help bring stability to the world. So, or at least so they think. And uh, with that being said, um, I know it's a bit of a, a rush through compared to our last uh, discussion, but I was uh, going through... Does anybody have anything that you want to say about the characters that they introduce there or the whole concept itself as a whole? Absolutely. This is, this is an excellent uh, opportunity to talk about what this show kind of presents to me. This is a, a very cute show that has a lot of darkness in it. So I kind of, And I kind of call it Mo Dark. It's a combination of two different things in one same, same show. <laughs> so it's, it's awesome. In one hand, you see cute girls... Uh, you know, uh, kill witches that are uh, themselves are nightmares, but they turn around. They turn around and have conflicts with each other and their inner psyche. You know, this this show definitely has a lot of ex self exploration. You don't see in other magical girl shows. Magical girl, magical girl shows are generally very bright and puffy and fluffy. They have a you know an enemy of the week. They defeat the enemy and they move on to find the final boss and defeat it. This show is not like that. It's, it's a lot of circular motion of find, exploring what right. who the real enemy is. So this this is really really a great show to uh, to if you really like these deep psych, psyche type type movies or type uh, TV shows. There is sort of there the way that show is structured. You do get a little bit of the monster of the week format. But it's not nearly as formulaic and oh. structured. It's it feels much more organic to the progression of the show. There's um, not enough time, really. I mean, yeah, well, that's part, that's part of it. Yeah. That's part of it. But I, now I've seen short series that tried to go into that format. You know that, and and it, it, it hasn't always worked for them. But um, <laughs> but yeah, this one definitely plays off of all the. All the tropes, all the stuff you expect from a Moe series, from a Magical Girl series, all the stuff that uh, reliable anime fans would expect from a Shaft production, all of that stuff, and, and just kind of throws it into a blender and, um, and, and puts out something that, that had not been seen before. It was... Um, it right. was you know, there were a few things. There was some darkness in Sailor Moon. There was some darkness in some of the other, uh, you know, Card Captor had some darkness in it. It dealt with some adult themes, but it was mostly light and fluffy. Uh, yeah. 
you know, you had a, but, and this one kind of started a wave of uh, new ones. And um, Brandon, you sent us that little announcement earlier about the re-release of Yuki Yuna as a hero. That yeah. was one that owes a huge debt to this, from what I understand. Um, I really want to see that one, but that's uh, there. It, it, it's it's pretty cool um, overall, but it's uh, it is kind of a dark one. Um. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Well, I, I think that's that's one of the things that is uh, that is unique about this at the time of its release mm -hmm. is that you're watching this, and uh, one of the things that was discussed a lot in the previous discussion on my channel was that you watch this, and many of the people who are watching this, the show expects you to have seen some previous Magical Girl shows. Oh, yeah. And it does come across as just like, well, this is kind of a somber slash melancholy version of a Magical Girl series with some unique art flourishes. It's all right. Uh, oh, my God, what did they do? <laughs> but, I mean, you expect it to be Monster of the Week because that's what you're used to with Magical <laughs> Girls. And I was gonna ask you, yeah. and then and, and to 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 uh, 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 um, uh, shamelessly misappropriate a jingle. It's it's the little show that smiles back until it bites her head off. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna ask you guys. Um, this is huh? my, like I said, my first Magic Girls. Would you suggest uh, other Magic Girls first for most people? Um, obviously, I can't go back and change that, but uh, <laughs> wondering uh, how odd it is to uh, start with this one. I, I have to admit, in terms of the like, magical girls of like the transformations and all that <laughs> kind of stuff, there are very few I've actually seen. Like I said, I think I had seen Card Captor Sakura before this. I had seen very little Sailor Moon before this. I actually never watched the show when it aired. I only had one of my one of my proudest pickups is I found the old pioneer release of the Sailor Moon R movie and got it for four dollars when it was going for like 150 bucks. Wow. <laughs> so that was awesome. And I had seen that movie. Um but and of course I had seen uh uh, Magical Girls are the sisters to Sentai series, and of course, I grew up with Power Rangers, so you know I had that. Yeah, uh, in that it, but in terms, of, I was talking last night of other Magical Girls, uh, you know, Slayers and uh, Maho Sensei Negima. You know, there had definitely been ones I had seen where Magical Girls were a big part of the show but they didn't really go into all the transformations and all that kind of stuff, you know? So for me, I, this was one of the first ones I saw in a sense, but well, yeah, my, my, my daughter uh, grew up on Power Rangers too. She, she loved them. Um, as a little, little uh, baby. She's standing up there, punching the air and kicking and stuff and trying to imitate the show. It's uh, very cute. I would probably recommend Sailor Moon if you're sitting there and just want to know the basics of the basics. Because you can't get more basic Magic Girl than Sailor Moon um, as as far as that is concerned. She's also one of the more famous ones. Though, I'm not going to lie, it's they, they are very saccharine, uh, sweet shows. Sailor Moon's not quite that bad, but it is, well, you know, it, it was originally good. purposed. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a magical girl show. Yeah, when you boil it down to it. So if you're actually crawl, if you're really looking for a magical girl show that has some action to it, that's not too saccharine. I would recommend Magic Knight Rares. Oh, that's a good one. That's a classic too. Yeah, no, it's it's easy to see that. And if you want one that's overly saccharine, I would recommend Wedding Peach. <laughs> that or Saint Tail. That's, oh, that's Lord. stupid. That's stupid, Mo. There, but it can go to extremes with uh, this thing. And if you want more of this melancholy, but uh, times a hundred, just get Happy Sugar Life because the title explains the whole series. <laughs> I've heard so much about that one. I'll have to see it one day. Or if you want something that, if you want something that perfectly marries, say, uh, uh, perfectly marries Magical Girl and Sentai in the same series, and 
is batshit insane. We were talking last night about going to be the twin tail. <laughs> That's a parody anime. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty good show. Um, dark, uh, dark ones would be like uh, magical, magical girl psyops. Asuka is a pretty good oh. dark one. Another one would be the Magical Girl Raising Project. That's a pretty darn yeah. dark one. I've heard that's an interesting yeah, one. I've got that one. I need to get into that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, really, that's really, really interesting. Yeah. Uh, but then, right. For every one of these things, remember the, the Madoka started this whole, kind of, kind of really started this dark Magical Girl thing. There's other ones like Illusione. That's some sort of complicated title. It starts with Illusione. But if but you really it, want, if you really want to boil these things down to the uh, Madoka is the anti natural girl show that you typically see. Uh, right. Is a very very open. You know, be kind to your to your friends. We love everybody. Uh, love mm -hmm. comfort all friendship. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the, the the magical transformation oh, scene. They, a big deal to it. They it's really cool. screw with the love conquers all deal. thing in right. the third film. And that third film, they really, they really mess with that concept. Right, that you, that concept, put it right in the waste bin. They threw it out the window. <laughs> but uh, let me just do a quick summary of the characters. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you got Madoka, who is the, uh, of course, the pink girl here in the uh, big. Uh, looking at the beginnings poster behind, you've got all of them there. She's kind of the uh, stand-in for the for the viewer, the nice, uh, sweet girl and main character of the series. You've got Sayaka, who is her friend, who is, uh, she comes across as more of a justice-seeking knight. Uh, then you've got uh, Hamura, I believe is her name, the, uh, the time uh, traveler girl, the time traveler girl who's the black-haired. And uh, she, uh, the time travel, you don't really know until later on in the series, but she's always extremely serious and kind of this bleak thing, but she's always warning uh, Madoka not to take the contract. You got Mommy, who is kind of the... Uh, uh, Homer is the resident buzzkill of the, of the group. <laughs> but you got Mommy, who is the uh, kind of big sister to the group. Uh, she's uh, got the... Right. You can see that she's had uh, some experience being a magical girl. Uh, she's got a lot of poise. Uh, even when she kills her first monster, she kills them and then sits down and has a, cu a cup of tea right after, right as the monster is <laughs> right. falling. And then, of course, you've got Kyoko, who is later, who's kind of more of a another one of the experienced magical girls, but she's kind of the uh, the opposite side of Sayaka uh, right. in many more ways. More like a soldier than a magical girl. She's but, like, uh, well, you know, yeah, she's more of a she's more of a pessimist. Uh, actually, she's even less of a soldier because she's because she's uh, more yeah. for herself than anything else. She doesn't actually, actually uh, have a mission. She's for herself. I was, she's, <laughs> yeah, she's the mean art. She's the she's the one that uh, like if you go um, if someone's like, well, whose side are you on anyway? And she'd be like, the same side I'm always on, mine. Yep. <laughs> yeah. she, she's, she's completely she's, neutral to uh, a yeah. slayer or a D and D character. Well, yeah, um, I was going to say uh, one of the ways that this, uh, there are, um, we were talking about how this plays on established tropes. And they each of these characters does play on an established trope. Uh, Homer is basically the flat affect character, the one who's usually very quiet, either serious or weird, and people just don't understand her. Uh, Sayaka is like the energetic sporty. What's that? Yeah, Sayaka is like the energetic sporty type who is like the stalwart friend. Friend, uh, Kyoko is pretty much the wild card. Like, just that she's yeah. the wild card in the group. Mommy is the Ojo sama character, and and also the big sister type that was mentioned, but definitely big the, sister, the mother. Yeah, <laughs> and. Um, but with her, but with the tea and everything, she she sort of has it, and those curls, she kind of has that Ojo Sama uh, feel too. And then Madoka again, she's the stand-in, but she's also the the the, the cute, uh, cheerful, innocent kind of. Um, yeah, so yeah, they all definitely fit into established uh, archetypes that you see, not just a magical girl, but in a lot of different. Uh, types of anime 
Um, and they work together well as in terms of balancing each other out personality-wise. They do. You just you rarely get to see them working together, which is one of the disappointments some people have. <laughs> I agree. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the problem with uh, the show is that you, you get to see Madoka as a magical girl and her little adventures every episode from the beginning credits. But uh, uh, in, in the movies, you get to see the opening credits played through once. And, and that's in the second film. They play basically, they play a remix of the opener. Well, they have a different opener that plays at the start of each film. Uh, yeah. That was the new song, but I know what you're saying is the they actual, actually play that song. The actual, and, yeah, they yeah. changed some of the graphics to make it more Homer centric, but only a few. Yep, and uh, I do like how they got that across. But the series itself, it comes across uh, with these evil witches, which um, this is one thing uh, I had had when we did the discussion, we didn't really talk as much about the witches themselves. We talked a lot about the characters, but we never really discussed the witches. What do y'all think of the witches themselves? Well, um, I guess I'll, I'll just go first. Um, I really think, a lo I mean, the one that ends up uh, uh, um, killing my, my mommy, um, Spoiler. <laughs> um, it, it was more weird. Um, little, slightly creepy how he, 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 he the witch gets her. Um, but uh, other than that, the, the, the rest, um, until the last one, um, aren't that memorable for me. Um, so, you know, they, they didn't really give me that big of an impression at all. Um, you know, uh, but the, the, the last one, the last one I, I, I liked, um, I don't know, just uh, the cackle. Just kept cackling the whole time. Like, uh, you know, I just uh, really enjoyed uh, really enjoyed that cackle. Um, Dude, uh, the second one gets, uh, gets a, a whole character part in the third movie, uh, Bebe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, um, the witches are essential, and the, and the labyrinths that they... Uh, hide inside um are pretty much bad acid trips like they the, the way they come across I, I visually like that. and it's like they're it's a fascinating way of presenting them uh wh whether you really feel like it's the best oh. way or not obviously we have seen different opinions on that but um i i think it's a fascinating oh. way they what's up I love how they do that. I mean, to me, oh yeah, yeah. The art style is rough, but the fact that they have this weird, other otherworldly cartoony, like a five-year-old drew it, a mixture yeah. between that and old school animation. Right, it's, it's uh, like some. There's like some yeah. cutout animation, kind of like South Park type animation, but with much less crudity to it. Uh, mixed drawings. with crayon drawings, mixed with yeah, it's a weird blend. And uh, not at all like a lot of times the you would think the um, the uh, inclination might be to go polished or this being shaft they sometimes insert completely random and often clunky looking CG into their stuff. They could have gone totally CG with the witches and it might have just looked awful. Uh, I think the way they did it was pretty cool. Uh, the uh, the original con the original thought process that was presented to them is that witches are uh, essentially familiars of witches, which are kind of the little little creatures that are running around in the labyrinths, uh, who end up eating enough humans to become powerful enough to become witches. And though there's a there's a truth to that, there's not the Bye. whole truth <laughs> that, to that, uh, and. We find out later, of course, that magic girls are actually witches once they have uh, become. Figure that out. Well, once they have fallen into despair. Witches are ma witches are magical girls that have fallen into despair. Yes. And uh, <laughs> they and all magical girls eventually do fall to despair. Some quicker than others. 
I mean, shoot, all it took mm-hmm. for Monica was one shot at uh, that final uh, boss in one of the occasions to uh, turn her into a witch, which is a interesting thing. Right. Well, the 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 witches are a a a kind of a critical part of the show. They kind of go again. It goes with the dual nature of, of each character. Uh, they all the magical girls have a potential to become a a, grit, a witch of, of varying powers, and depending on how on their grief and what they've done with their, they're measured by their their uh, karmic value. <laughs> they have something to do with their families or something to do with their with their other uh, uh, view towards life. Without the witches, you wouldn't have Madoka Magica. It would just be another right. magical girl show. You know, it's plain simple. And uh, uh, Kibe kind of talks about it, saying. Well, uh, magical girls are called girls because they have not become mature yet, and the mature form is the witch. It's not like the magical girls become a witch. I, I guess I'm not saying it right, but they are a witch in growth. It, it develop, it's part of the development. They're coming from well, going from a you know from non-power to magical girl, then finally to the witch, which is what what they ultimately become because it's part of their life cycle. Like a squire to a knight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they they give a little bit more insight, oddly enough, into the witch uh, form in the third film, uh, which is uh, I keep alluding to it, but I hope one day hopefully we'll cover it. It's uh, as far as that. That's one of the three, uh, one of the several uh, surprises that come. The first being that they kill off mommy in the third episode, or really, in this case, I think her second conflict. Uh, with a witch, uh, she ends up getting basically her head bitten right off by the. Uh, well, it's the, the second we see on candy switch. And the the next one, of course, is the revelation that when they get their soul gems made, that's where their soul resides, is in the gem, not in the bodies. They're zombies. Uh. Their, their souls, uh, their life force are condensed and thrown into a special gem-like uh, device, and their bodies are hardened in a, in a manner that allows them to take pain and to uh, battle uh, from from day to day. So, you know, without without the, that combination, at least that solution, they would not be, won't be able to survive the witch the witch fights. And of course, then uh, then of course the final major revelation when it comes to these. Is that uh, is the one about them becoming the witches when they fall into despair, and usually the despair, the the power of the witch, is usually related to the karmic damage because the amount of blessings is equaled out by the amount of curses they end up bestowing as a witch, and uh, the, sure. but uh, as far as uh, falling to despair, it's very uh, it depends really on the on the magic girl how long it is. And that is a interesting, it's an interesting concept. Like some of them, like Sayaka, she falls near right away. She just has one after the other. But a lot of that is tied to their wish. It's, uh, you know, uh, but Kyoko is one of those that's an interesting case because Kyoko managed uh, to uh, survive the despair. And as uh, Roger said, sh- soldier on, essentially, uh, by changing her point of view and adapting whereas uh, sayaka could not adapt to having uh the very basis of her wish get away from her um right and, and of course then you got Ma- uh, madoka's witch at the end which uh as as we assume at the beginning maybe she was wishing to be a mag- she wanted really wanted to be a magic right this, this essence of her wish yeah, actually, i think information on Monica, Monica um, wished actually uh, read somewhere that her original wish was to save a dying cat. I could see that, and it is shown in the opening credits with her holding a cat. They don't really say anything else in the show about why she was shown holding a cat, other than it it, it was a cute image. But that would make sense why they would sneak sneak that in there. Yeah, it would be it would be yeah. interesting to have a Monica series uh, following that original timeline right. 
uh, just a, like just a, a prequel like, series, which would be kind of cool. I can't remember. I can't remember how much of that was shown in a different story. Cause basically a different story takes place in one of the alternate timelines and it does have a different vantage point. And like I said, it's a little heavier on Kyoko and um, Mommy, but I believe it does actually show the other three. I just, it's been a while since I've read it, but that was part of that series was showing old effect, like essentially stuff that's part of the story, but you don't really know that it is from watching the series. Do you know what I mean? Um, but real quick before we lose, um, the point was made last night, I think, that uh, Sayaka and Kyoko are kind of two sides of a coin. Mm -hmm. And and someone said something just a couple minutes ago. They got me thinking about the, how much of foils they are. Yeah. Um, I think it was you, Brandon. You were talking about um, – but like – how how um, Sayaka couldn't adapt and it brought her down and Kyoko did and it saved her. And that, I think, is one of the ways in which they are foils for each other is that um, we kind of touched on it last night, but I don't think it was worded that way, that basically Sayaka at first absolutely abhors the idea she sees Kyoko as basically abandoning her values, essentially. Uh, and and Kyoko, for her part, sees Sayaka as a stubborn idiot. And they really come to appreciate each other, you know, in the limited time they have. But they really do, yeah, That I think that's a good way of looking at it, that, like, their, their, their ability to adapt to the situation or, or, or their difference in ability is, is really what it comes down to on why one was able to do it for so long and the other one wasn't. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hadn't really thought of it in quite that way before. And an earlier series, and I, I did mm -hmm. double check the dates and yes, uh, when they cry was actually an earlier series. But yeah, I can definitely. We made this. We touched on this last time. When they cry, which is a series we covered on, uh, one of the, I think the second episode of our anime anticlimax series, yep. which is a horror anime about uh, this group in a town. But the main character has a similar concept uh, to uh, our time traveling girl here, which is the third revelation is that she's a, is that our dark haired girl is a time traveler who has been seeing the death of her friends over and over and over again doing everything she can to try and find a timeline where it works mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. is pretty much the premise of when they cry so I, yeah. I do wonder if they just decided you know what would if when they cry was a magical girl show <laughs> i'd be interested to see how much of an impact when they cry had on the creation of this series it, it, it is an interesting question the, no doubt the struggle is very similar it, the yeah. internal struggle because the idea of giving into despair and you see that in the new series uh the new when they cry series gal where uh where the main character is given the chance the ability to potentially kill themselves for good and they have to mm -hmm. weigh that potential for total despair. Just like the other girl, she can give up, but if she does, she will be fated to become a witch herself. And right. It is, and she'll have to accept the fact that Monica is lost forever. It's a, uh, mm -hmm. it's a very, uh, a very tough decision for her. And actually, someone uh, at some point earlier, someone was talking about this, like as being a series that shows the importance of love and friendship, even despite all the negativity and despair. Um, yeah, in in uh, yeah, spoilers again for people, if you if you haven't uh, watched When They Cry, cover your ears for just a, a second. <laughs> unless you don't but care what, about spoilers. Unless you don't care. Or you could go watch our discussion and have it all spoiled for you. Um, but one of the uh, one of the chief uh, way, well, the, the 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 thing that they finally ultimately decide is um, we uh, need to all work together 
and we need to all support each other. And that means all of us, everyone, that includes the character Hanyu who had held back and not joined the fray. Um, so, and that's a similar concept. And that also is a very common concept in uh, a lot of different animes, but it's interesting to see it applied in this way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, a, a causality loop in this in this anime, just like in Hiragashi. You know, when the conditions are met, yep. the characters die, and it happens. Right. To, and the uh, the Miku girl get her name, you know, but she has to reinitialize another world. Rika. That's what, that's what yeah. Homura would ha had to do every time. And that's and, why mm -hmm. she was really deeply connected to Monica, really, really uh, deeply connected to her, because she was trying to save M Monica, uh, Madoka. And I uh, was ever try, ever failing and trying again and failing again. But I had a of course to her. I guess in the end, it's kind of ironic that uh, she is the one is the really the main culprit culprit that so many timelines came to an end. Uh, everything has price. Right. And, and no matter what, it does, it's amazing that they, they, they can have so many different facets of things going on at the same time. And when they get to the end, it makes it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it is, and that's uh, one of the things that makes this very interesting is you look at these two in the spiral, but you also look at Madoka and her development as a character. A lot of people, I remember making the comment when we went over the characters in depth in the other discussion, a lot of people didn't like her because she was kind of a flat blank slate, but she gets filled out mm -hmm. remarkably well as the times go on, and she's one of the few who retains some memory as to what's going on from the other timelines. And it does take that journey to finally get her to realize what she has to do at the end. Uh, without, without the sacrifice that Harana made, she would never have been able to come to the decision of her wish or even be willing to go through what's required of her to grant that wish or to make it really. Indeed. <laughs> is that uh is that Fu? Yeah, that is. So uh he it sounds like he's got something he really wants to say. <laughs> he's he's weighing in on, on the show, I guess. <laughs> uh, he's saying that uh he, he is uh he is eaten, but he still wants more. <laughs> Fat cat. No, uh, in the in the movie, I know we talked about um, some of the witches, but in this in this kind of like series, I kind of see uh, three main ones. You know, if, if that goes across the you know across the an across the anime, but in these two movies, we have two major witches that we talk we talk about. It was the the one that Sieka, oh, what's her name? Sorry, Sieka turns into. Yeah. And then we good. have and then we have another very unique witch. It's a like as it's, it's pronounced like it's a German name like a uh, or well, well, Pergisnacht. Something I can't, I can't for the life of me, yeah. I can't I can't <laughs> pronounce it right. It's uh, it is the thing that draw that draws Homura into the fray. It is that yeah. thing that killed that, that that kills Madoka in the first place, and she didn't want that mm -hmm. to happen. And, and, the, and that which in itself is a very interesting composition uh, of, of different different. I don't know if everyone wants. We're getting too deep into the, that. The, okay. <laughs> too, so, too so apparently, uh, Walpurgisnacht is the eve of May Day on which witches are held to ride to an appointed rendezvous. Uh, at least that's one thing that I'm seeing here. Um, so it's apparently uh, some sort of German spiritual yeah. day. Considered the yeah. highest yeah. holiday on the satanic yeah. calendar. <laughs> so there you go. That's it's something like interesting. German Halloween or <laughs> something like that. But yeah. Well, it's something along the Well, it's not really German per se. Okay. While Perkis not is German. But the the night itself is. Um, I 
Yeah. I really want to see the uh, the new movie that they say they're going to do the backstory of that witch. Right. Oh, and I'd love to see that thing. That, sounds that, that, interesting. What and, happened? So and QB shows like how all the basically mm -hmm. that the exchange there is an exchange there because they actually help mm -hmm. society advance. I mean, all of like the major female figures, Joan of Arc. Oh. Uh, all of them were 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 magical girls. Apparently. Uh, yeah. But it's different with the with the Wag apparently Saint Saint Walpurga, uh, Saint Walpurga apparently was considered uh, to she was hailed by the Christians of Germany for battling pests, rabies, and whooping cough, as well as witchcraft. Uh, she was supposed to protect from witchcraft. Um, so that's kind of interesting that the eve of that night would be considered the opposite of of that thing. That's kind of fun. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, mm. apparently the well, purpose not witch is actually a, comp a composition witch of many different other magical girls. They somehow they came together to make this monstrosity thing. Yeah, because uh, when they when you see the uh, end where Puella makes her wish and uh, dis disperses it, it uh, you see the various ones off. dancing around. Um, but again, it's uh, its nature is helplessness. Uh, I'm trying to read a bio on it. It's also inverted too. It's a, so purposely. It, it looks like a cone that's inverted because I think the the uh, the, the creator of uh, Madoka Magic has said that. That the uh, one well, not and the witch that Madoka eventually becomes, they, they're like a pair. They can, if they look like a sand, like a sand glass. Yeah. And it kind of makes sense because Homer, with her witch form, she has two arms reaching up to the sky trying to reach for something. And it makes my looks makes a lot of sense that there she's with, uh, kind of. Kind of reaching for the other witch in a, in a in a in an abstract sense. Well, when you see uh, when you see Homura's witch form uh, in a in an alternative version, it's uh, also a very disturbing thing. You see it. You see different witch forms for each one of them. Uh, Actually, do you see the final her uh, Homura's Homura's witch form in the Rebellion movie? Yeah, though I don't want to go too far into that. I don't want to spoil it for Crawl. True. If he wants True. To. Uh, but. <laughs> It is uh, it is interesting how they manage it, and with this particular one, uh, Madoka is uh, she makes her wish basically to get rid of all the, well, basically to stop the all the magical girls from becoming witches, so that she can go back in time and purify their gems before they become mm -hmm. witches. So she becomes sort of a fairy to the afterlife. Well, she and, doesn't really do that. From what I understand, the witches still so I mean, the gems still sully and break, and the girls disappear. Yeah. Uh, what she does is simply prevent them from transforming into well, witch witches and tr and kind of ferries them to the other side. That's what I'm saying. Is she kind of becomes a fairy yeah. to the afterlife. And right. That's uh, a Shinigami. Which, <laughs> and uh, and you get to see again a little bit more of that in the third movie. Um, mm -hmm. when they talk, when they touch on Sayaka, there's a, and there's a very touching scene with Sayaka because hers, you know, very tragic that she heals this guy that she is in love with and then realizes that she cannot be with him because of what she's become because of the wish. And they get to observe what's happened to him as Monica says, I couldn't stop what would happen because if I did, then everything that you did would go to nothing. And it just, uh, again, the series itself was so melancholy. But uh, oddly enough, as far as the other magic girls, when it, when it creates this alternate world from her wish, all the rest of them are working together to take out the, uh, gosh, what were they calling them? Wraiths. The wraiths which look like these Buddhist monks with their eyes kind of... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the mosaic out. Yeah. Which... I, did, I, did, I would like to mention uh, one thing. We didn't mention this last night either. It was kind of funny the way uh, Hamora was trying to help Sionica 
And uh, Sonic's like, "Why are you help? Why are you trying to help me? You don't, you don't can't give a damn." And Sonic's kind of like, "You're, you're right. I don't. I only care about Monica. I don't care. About, I don't give a damn about you. What well, happens to you? I only care about Monica, and you're hurting Monica." <laughs> Yep. <laughs> kind of cold. <laughs> She's got one track mind. <laughs> yeah, but of course those two never uh, liked each other at all in the in, in this timeline. <laughs> and of course, the important carryover is that she is the only person in the new timelines that remembers Madoka's existence because her existence is kind of erased as she becomes a goddess. Yeah, uh, Madoka becomes a a concept. No longer as a physical being per se, but she exists in another higher plane of being. So now she's a concept that can look at uh, back and forth throughout all the timelines and here and there and everywhere at the same time. Now I've got to watch for I've got to watch that that other series record, which has like couple has a couple sequel seasons too, which are yeah, there. it's uh, I need to see that too. So there's uh, just so much to to see that is. <laughs> Well, uh, the anime, there's not nearly as much as there is with the. There's like five or six different manga series <laughs> at it, this it's, point. It, it's it might be more than that. <laughs> yeah, it's got a it's got a lot of spinoffs. They and... even have one. There's a manga called Tart Magica, where Jeanne d'Arc is is a magical girl, and I've yeah. I read a couple of volumes of that. It's pretty interesting. Well, they but, show uh, they show uh, Jeanne they show yeah they show her when when. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when she being show Joan of Arc. right? But that's the uh, <clears throat> um, what was I going to say? I don't remember. I was gonna, but anyway, <laughs> but uh, of course, everybody's uh, favorite character, QB. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, it, it's Contract? just. Uh, but again, uh, this is one of those uh, odd series. It is an exception to the rule. Though many series have tried to to uh, uh, copy in a way, I don't know how many of them have been as successful. Uh, maybe like a, like a Roger said, maybe Magical Girl Raising Project, which I still need to see. Um, but mm -hmm. I I will be curious uh, when we eventually get to something like that. Um, mm -hmm. Does anybody have anything else they want to talk about story and character wise before we get into um, the real meat of these movies? Uh, well, I feel like it's been a hot minute since we heard anything from Dave. Do you have anything to throw in? Oh, well, did, I uh, did you finish it? <laughs> I didn't finish it. I've got I got two episodes to go, but uh, but uh, I've gone through like the whole showing what Homura uh, uh, goes through, uh, through, uh, through just to try to keep uh, Madoka fr uh, uh, from harm, you know? Um, and th uh, that's where I am. But, uh, but uh, as far as characters uh, uh, go, I know I didn't really say all too much on ca on characters. I think my favorite character right uh, right now is Hamora at this point? Welcome to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because there's a lot of um, there's a lot that that we weren't shown in like the beginning six episodes. Like they they hid uh, that part from us at least until like the second half, you know. Well, it's a, it's a series that that works on surprises. So yeah, um, so uh, and like Steingate, it dealt with uh, time travel. Um, so, um, but the other thing is, is Hamara doesn't understand Final Destination. You know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, the fact that no matter what you do, you will not be able to change fate. Uh, the Reapers list. <laughs> I gotta watch. Maybe I'll watch that tonight. I think the destination before I fall asleep. Uh, it's been a long time since I've watched Final Destination, <laughs> but I, I just remember that roller coaster one. <laughs> well, 
there always seem to be rules when it comes to time travel. Yes. You cannot mess with with fate or the destiny of one, uh, of another. You also can't mess with things in the past. Uh, you know, and and these are we've we've gone and had a history of trying to come up with like all these rules even though it hasn't like entirely been what is it uh created scientifically we've come up with uh, uh with a metric rule of what can and what can't happen in time travel you know mm -hmm. uh and mm -hmm. <sighs> Hamara just doesn't understand some of that. I don't think, even though uh, though she is an experienced magical girl, because of being able to go b uh, backwards in time as much as she was. But she's trying to fight death and uh, or cheat death. At, it, at at its goal with her uh, her rule of th uh, thumb, and it's just not happening. I, and I don't think it will happen. You know. No. Yeah. Kubey tells uh, tells them what what was really going on with the time travel. It's kind of it is a, yeah. kind of a heartbreaking kind of thing. Well, for all your travel, for all your effort, know. whatever you're trying to do, all you did was make Madoka's problem ever more greater. Well. I think that the Cube that granted Ahamara's wish uh, understood what was going on, even though the other Cube didn't realize or even understand what Hamara was uh, at the end. But the Cube does explain it to them why, oh, now I know why Madoka is so powerful. powerful because all of that karma keeps building. And building and building until she is the focal point of millions of lives as opposed to just like dozens One. of lives yeah. and that's uh and that really makes her extremely powerful uh the most powerful of magical girls yeah. and the most wicked of witches yeah and i i really like that concept and i think it's really interesting it's like uh you know when qb uh explains it he's like I would have understood if she was like a queen or or someone that that really uh, was as of tremendous importance to a society or whatever. Uh, but she's just an ordinary girl, and 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 by, from all appearances, that's the case. But when you literally have dozens, if not hundreds, of realities that all exist because of the desire to protect this one person. Yeah, you could see how it would be a little more, <laughs> a little bit more of uh, influence there, um, if you will. <laughs> well, uh, with that being said, uh, why don't we move on to production design? I really wanted to, for those who actually watch the movie, this is uh, a little bit more important because you get to see some of the differences i don't know about i don't know maybe i wanted to ask uh, those who'd seen the movie and the series uh, as well uh production design looked much stronger as far as like the animation uh the fight scenes especially the fight scenes looked a lot stronger a lot more fluid in the movies in the even colors. though even though they didn't they didn't slack a lot in the series but Damned if they weren't beautiful in the movies. Yeah, they had more of a budget. Uh, Madoka has become more popular, and now they can put more money into it. So yeah, they they really just took out. They really just removed the the parts that were glaring, because in the in the show you'll see that not the character designs don't always follow true. They kind mm -hmm. of break. You know, they kind of become more simplistic, or the animation. There's some cheats going on to make the uh, make the the budget work throughout the show. Well, they didn't have that problem in the movies. They simply just uh, just the, the blew the budget and made made the, the movie the way they wanted to. Yeah, I, I definitely think that they had um, 
a little more consistency and uh, character design and all that stuff. They look more polished. And the backgrounds looked a hell of a lot more polished. I think they put a lot into the backgrounds. And it's, it, they're beautiful movies. The show is... It, it, but it's not, like, so different that you would be shocked. Like, you... It, it it still looks very familiar. I just I feel like the movies definitely have more of that polish to them. Oh, just just as a side note, that's not my cat this time. <laughs> I think that was my cat. Yeah, uh, I got him. I got I I took a break to to carry him off to the porch. Uh, so now, one one thing I like to point out about the about the show um, that Shaft really went all in to make this thing big. And it even goes down to the what witches are named. Um, they have the anytime you have a witch, you have some symbols that appears with the witch. And if you break, the, they're actually on the internet. They, all the symbols have been translated into words. So now Chap had made a whole whole alphabet of different symbols to to, to denote what witch was what. Which witch was which? That's correct, and <laughs> you, see, uh, you see on some of the artwork that Madoka Magica would be all Puella Maggie Madoka Magica would be all ruined out with the with the chef's uh, new new uh, runic language, which is really artistic. I mean, I mean, they really threw everything at it. Well, as Jake said, sometimes the art is for art's sake, and if we ever cover the third movie, we'll definitely be able to talk about some of that because. Whew, they definitely uh, went there. Uh, and <laughs> uh, but uh, in, in well, these one, films, they were a lot more that, subdued with it. <laughs> one that comes to mind for me uh, when it comes to them, and I'm, I'm about 90% sure of that I'm right on this. Let me just double check real quick. There was one show I saw that I was like, yeah, oh, that's art for art's sake. And yes, this was a Shaft production, the F series, F, A Tale of Melodies, and F, A Tale of Memories. Oh, the whole yeah, yeah. crap did not feel like art for art's sake. <laughs> Shoot, Air, was Air one of the uh, studio trigger films? Th- well, no. Key film. I yeah, air know, was key. Air was also yeah. art for art's sake, though. <laughs> well, key's a whole different creature, but well, yeah, they do go into that. <laughs> if you really want an really anime that does art for art's sake, I would just look at the what was it, the Count of Monte Cristo? Oh, God. oh yeah, was very heavy into that. That was it was fun though. Also yeah. heavy into the backgrounds. Um, yeah, but uh, I would say now going back into this and the series. What do y'all think of the fight scenes in these, how fluid they are? Even in the series, I always considered them imaginative, creative, and how they use the magical girl's powers, especially with Mommy and her uh, guns. Her guns. But uh, even, or even Sayaka, where she has the different savers lined up. Uh, it's just, uh, I love the creativity and uh, just the fluidity of the, of the various action scenes in both the series and the movie. They're very well done. I mean, I've, I have no particular no particular issue with the cinematography of the of the fights and the explosions and magical effects, you know. And uh, and particularly though, how the witches I kind of like how the witches are drawn, you know, they're they're more like uh, like claymation, kind of like you know, the, or 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 uh, clay clay motion, I guess you can call that. So, yeah, <laughs> and they have and they have this uh this uh, this and when the witch appears, they got they got this. But is it really a, a prestige of different creatures and creatures and other things that 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 like they're their servants and they come out and they envelop an area and which kind of takes care, takes over that area? I mean, it's is, it's a it's a really beautiful beautiful choreographed show. You know, it just it, there's very little to be left to be desired, at least to me. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Kroll, did you have anything to say as far as the uh, combat scenes in action? Um, yeah, I, I liked uh, I liked some of it. I mean, they, they had they had some cool weapons. Um, uh, so so you know, it, it, it was it was fun. I mean, even though the the witches didn't really look all that menacing, uh, except for maybe the last one. Um, you know, it was it was it was cool seeing them. 
um, you know, fighting with the, with the combat. And again, I know uh, the wish is a pivotal to, to the story, and I really enjoyed the story. I, I actually wish the witches <laughs> had been um, more of a presence, like you know, more threatening than, than they were, because um, I don't I don't feel that they really showed how threatening the witches were. Um, I, but they got. You gotta love Harama's battle with uh with the witch towards the end with all those like various weapons that you took from military bases, yeah. the yeah. bombs, all the guns, just boom. Yeah, and the magic symbols and stuff. Um, yeah, all that, all that was fun, and I, I really enjoyed that. And uh, you know, um, it's uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh. It, 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 it's like I said. I, I enjoyed it. Um, uh, I, I just think they they, they should have made the witches more menacing. Um, it would have uh, really emphasized how how bad they were and how evil they were. Um, to me, they just didn't quite come across the way um, they talk about the witches. Well. Um... Yeah, it's uh, again. It is a uh, fun. I, I do think that the action is very fun in this. But yeah. I guess let's move to the music. Um, I checked with Dave, uh, but yeah, let, let's move to the music. Um, this one is uh, has everything that the that the show had music wise. Literally everything, because they even incorporate the ending theme and an opening theme in those two movies within them but add additional stuff on top of it i feel mm -hmm. i feel like it really does still stand out is probably some of the most amazing music i've heard in an anime when it comes to just the, the entire soundtrack and as Brittany had said in the last one of course you, you can't pretty good Ivan yes Maria and uh and it being happy go lucky but uh <laughs> Well, you, you didn't you didn't think that was like a super cheerful scene that nothing bad could possibly follow? No. So, Jake, uh, you're probably, <laughs> you're the one who listens to music more than any of the rest of us. So you listen extremely carefully. You know all, okay. and all that stuff. Um, okay. So, what about the uh, the additional pieces that were selected for the films? What are your thoughts on those? Well, the main additional one, the, the by far, um, my vo yeah, I am on. Okay, uh, the main additional one is a song called "Luminous" by Clarice. Who they the song "Connect" is also by Clarice, and that is played. Uh, that's the main theme from the series. "Luminous" is the main theme from both movies, and it's. A similar vibe to it. I like it. It's a good song. Um, I don't recall that they really added a whole lot of additional new music. Although maybe some of the individual orchestral pieces may have been new or retouched. Um, but the overall, the use and incorporation of the themes from this show, like you said, it was, it was very well done. You yeah, definitely. Uh. Well, um, well, with that, uh, I really I enjoyed the music myself. Um, good, I thought good. the music was really well done. Um, again, you know, I don't really watch anime or whatever, so I don't know how it would uh, compare to other stuff. But um, I, I liked it. I liked it a lot, and I. I uh, I ain't, I didn't read the words and, and pay attention to all the songs um, from from the shows, um, but some of them I did, and and uh, the ones that I, that I read, I, I you know I thought thought they were meaningful and uh, they told the story upon themselves. Um, not you know they weren't just songs thrown in there. You know they they were as much part of the part of the show as, as everything else, and uh, they go along with the images and stuff and. Uh, yeah, so I thought um, I thought the music was really really well done. Um, it's it's I think it's neat how they they uh, tell a story with the pitches and the song all on its own, and, and I'm new to that, so um, 
I thought I thought it was neat, and I, I liked it. And, and the, the music is is catchy. I, I found myself um, humming some of uh, some some of it um, earlier yesterday, and, and just you know, and, and I mean, I, I probably would have been singing it if I uh, you know spoke Japanese, <laughs> but since I don't, um, you know, I was in, and, and it's, I don't know, it just didn't sound right to try to sing the English words that that they they tell you. Uh, I think it just it oh. sounds better in its original form, even though you don't understand it. I'll have to uh, when we uh, we cover Slayers. If you decide to join us, I have to. I'll have to forward you the. Uh, I have the soundtrack to that, and they actually have English language versions of all the openers for those, which is interesting. Um, on on that soundtrack, which is uh, very cool. But um, with that being said. Um, I talked with Dave and he was finishing out the, uh, is going to go ahead and try and finish out the series. Um, did uh, any of y'all have any other final comments on the series before we talk about uh, favorites? Um, well, one other thought uh, as far as the themes and whatever, this has come up a little because we're talking about doing that uh, video upcoming about openers uh it's kind of rare that you get a full-on opener sequence in a movie um you definitely see that in anime more than probably any other type of movie i've seen uh, <laughs> but uh it, it it it's really interesting when you see a, a full-on opener like you do see here with uh, the clary song um and and I liked it a lot. I will admit when they reused uh Connect late in this movie, the second movie, I I found that kind of odd. I was like was they weird. start they used some new footage with Homura and I'm like if they had leaned a little harder into that and made it more of a montage maybe of her travels through time. I think that would have been extremely effective, but they kind of cheaped out and used just a few new images, but mostly used the same opener. And um, I think they could have improved that a little bit, but yeah. Well, uh, with that being said, uh, well, why don't we start uh, talking about just uh, favorite scenes um, and uh, oh. I guess we'll start with you, Crawl. If you have a favorite scene uh, in the whole, it, it can be the same as this was in the, the series one. Uh, I'm not sure if I remember. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was the, um, the uh, final the final battle and the, and the, the whole final um, scene. Uh, like I said, the, the, the witch the witch's cackle and and the um, the, the the fight. Um, was impressive and uh, fun, and uh, they actually, you know, they know that um, this this witch was a power to be reckoned with. Um, and then the whole, um, you know, um, Amora, um, you feel so bad. She, she's bloodied, and, and, and she, her foot stuck, and, and she's gonna die. And and she's just at the point of of, of she's done. She 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 can't go on anymore. She she. Giving up and and and, she, and her her gem is turning black and you know she's going to turn into a witch and it's 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 very very emotional like you know you don't want her to turn into a witch after all this and at the last moment um, Monica shows up and 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 grabs her hand and you know tells her not not to not to give up and and uh, she'll 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 protect her uh, for once and and uh, then uh, we get Monica's wish. Um, I know it's like a big scene, but you know, just the whole thing was just really well done. And then, you know, uh, Kube's shock was kind of a shock. He doesn't have uh, emotions closely, but still kind of a shock of her wish of what she wanted. And, uh, and then it was granted. And, you know, that was just really awesome. She just basically gave up her life. I mean, she doesn't die, but like I said, it becomes um, another being uh, to save 
basically everybody and save all the women that become uh, evil witches. Um, that she saves their souls, and uh, and um, kind of, it was uh, just well done, you know. And she she just does the ultimate sacrifice, and uh, yeah, I, I really I really thought that was a, a a superb ending to a pretty damn good story. Um, so, and I did not, I saw a lot of stuff coming. I did not see that one coming. So, <laughs> all right. We got one surprise out of it. <laughs> how, how about you, Dave? I saw your microphone come back on there for a moment. Uh, you'll have to unmute, Dave. There you go. I'm going to have to say that um, I, I, I still think that the preacher scene is, is pretty good, but I think one of the stronger points of the story is the whole Hamora uh, going b uh, back and for uh, uh, forth, learning her power, and uh, those were some pretty powerful scenes that uh, um, yeah, she kept seeing Madoka die, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And since that's about where I'm up to. That's <laughs> that's yeah, that's yeah. where I'm gonna have to uh, I have to say those are my two favorite uh, scenes so far. All uh, right, series. So awesome. Uh, well, what about you, Roger? What's your favorite uh, scene? Well, to me, my the my favorite scene in the in the movies would be the fight between Homura and the well purchase not which you know the explosions and the effort and the despair and the redo and uh, that thing is really is a big you know, big deal to me on on the series anyways and it really comes up front, up front on this series on this on this movie on these movies should i say yeah what you don't know is that all hurricanes are actually witches we just <laughs> uh... the weatherman will agree with you my friend well, that's why all the worst ones are named females. Exactly. <laughs> that was their magical girl name before they got changed. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I suppose the, the male ones are warlocks. <laughs> uh, what about uh, you, Jake? What was your favorite scene? Uh, hmm. Well, like I said last night, it's kind of hard to pick a favorite scene in a series like this. Uh, cause I'm not really sure favorite is the right word. Uh, there's super memorable scenes. Um, I'm trying to remember if it would be anything different really than what I had said before, but really the big shockers, the big pivotal moments where you, where the wool is pulled from your eyes and you learn radically new things that changed everything that came before. There's like four of those moments scattered through the series and they do hold up. Uh, so I definitely enjoy seeing them each time because they do hold up. Uh, again, I'm not sure I would call them favorites, but they're certainly notable <laughs> scenes. Um and I do get sort of a sick thrill out of some of the QB scenes because I, it's just, as we said before, he's such a great antagonist because he's so, you know, um, we would call him evil, but really, again, it's just a different... Um, it's just a different value set, and yeah. Um, yeah. and and honestly, he's almost. It, I'm almost reminded of uh, Zap Brannigan. Uh, what makes a man go neutral? 
<laughs> he almost is completely neutral, but it's just his version of neutral is so far afield from what we would consider neutral. <laughs> it's it's just that disconnect is a lot of fun and disturbing at the same time. <laughs> See, for me, I think my fine, my favorite, uh, and this is a little bit different, um, with the series, it was Mommy's Death because that just so shocked me in the moment. And I felt like that was so pivotal. But in the movie, I've already experienced that. So I'd say for the movies, it's probably that lead up uh, to the fight at the end where she's walking along and you can see the wind is blowing and the circus animals and stuff going by as you can see that they're carrying like this large menagerie of familiars and so on with them it's uh just such a uh foreboding feeling it's just uh pretty cool um indeed but with that that's the movies uh of this series uh if you want some extra uh intake like we go in depth in depth in our discussion of the anime on Septim Sen versus the world. So this is kind of a companion piece. I think they both work together and they both, uh, cause we talked about some things we did not talk about on that discussion. Uh, so you should check out both of these discussions and, and get a full on uh, a feel for this. Um, but that's enough of me plugging my channel. Before we end this or, or go any further, I would, I would like to, um, Point out something that, that I was thinking about. Um, uh, mommy had her own apartment, and uh, but she was still in school, so we guess she's not a not an adult. Um, I kind of wondered what why she wouldn't have had like been put in like a foster care system or something. I mean, I, I would imagine that they do that in Japan. Um, we do in the U.S. I mean, if she lost her parents, um, and then she basically raised herself, and again, also um, you don't get paid being a witch hunter and all things, so where did you get the money for the apartment and stuff? <laughs> they, they, well, they didn't have really that at all. I know starting high school, but uh, Brandon or Roger may be able to correct me if I'm wrong. I, I don't know if it normally would apply to middle school, but it could be the town they're in. But I, I know um, that there is like an educational stipend uh, for people who are in school um, and also certainly from the age of high school. But I think from the age of middle school, people can and often do live without parents. Yeah, it's Certainly common. it's common in anime. The age of consent is like 12 in Japan. So it's well, it's 13. Oh, it's yeah. 13. That's crazy. Have yeah. kids on their own like that. Right. Well, it may have been part of her wish too. It's hard to say I was exactly. Thinking that. I was thinking that, but I thought obviously, I thought. But that, yeah, uh, it's it's common. Again, I think we established last night that she's probably fifteen. It's common yeah. in anime for fifteen-year-olds to be living on their own. That is yeah. not at all weird. In that high yeah. school age, absolute trope yeah. in in anime. Right. Yeah, okay. It was odd. It was odd to me. Me. In this case, they just get in the way. They just remove them. They go on a trip. They go. They they uh, they yeah. get married again. <laughs> well, uh, whatever. I can understand, but uh, it's like right. phones not working in horror movies. You know, <laughs> <laughs> being gone. You know, you know, dead was is different than you know on a on vacation without the kid. You know. <laughs> yeah, mommy is a uh, more of a tragic story in herself because. It, yeah, because it looks like uh, all, all of her immediate family are dead, and yeah. everybody else that's close by is well, they're they're too far away distance wise. Yeah, so like she said, she's been alone. You know, um, you know that, that's why. I mean, like I said, when when she was so excited that she'd be a duo with with, with Monica, and and then she finally won't be alone. How happy she was. And the warning Homura gave, I'm like, oh man, she's gonna die. <laughs> you know, like that told me. I know everyone else was surprised, but um, right. yeah. Yeah, she was all tied uh, up at that, the time. That, she couldn't that, help. That, that told me <laughs> that she was gonna die. And, and I was, I'm sorry I was right because honestly, I, I liked her 
a lot and it was sad that she died. Um, but I, I get why you guys said that it was pivotal for the story for her to die like that and, and, and to make it more interesting. Um, I agree, but she, she was a really a really good, good character, but I guess that's what makes it a good death is when it's a character you really care about. So, uh, well, actually, Carl, why don't we hit with you then uh, for an outro? Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm uh, I'm Carl, uh, aka Ron, real name. Um, I'm disabled, so I don't work, but I, I do watch uh, movies and TV shows and play video games, and I read books. I'm reading uh, Star Wars books right now. Um, and I come on to this podcast and uh, Delusions of Grandeur. And I made my debut on the uh, on on the um, show last night on Something Sin vs. the World show. Um, mm-hmm. I think I'm going to be coming again next month um, to check out that uh, Slayer's um, anime. Good deal. Because um, that's uh, interesting to me. So uh, we'll see how many more times they come or not. Um, but uh, yeah. It's uh, fun. I enjoy uh, watching movies and, and, and shows and stuff and, and, and talking about them. Um, so, uh, who knows how many more podcasts I may join if there's any others that I that may interest me. All right. Uh, so, uh, Jake, tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. Well, I'm Kodabuki Jake. I also am a co-host of Septum Sim vs. the World. And I am an anime and movie and TV show and generally a media fan and collector here in Central Virginia where I have been driving myself to exhaustion in the last week uh, trying to get ready for our upcoming Versus Awards uh, where we will be presenting what our esteemed Academy has dubbed the best films of 2021. Uh, The nominations are over at midnight on Thursday. So any Academy members listening, please get in your votes before midnight on Thursday. And we definitely want lots of votes. We want people to participate and have a say at both steps, both the nomination and the voting process of this. Uh, It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have some really weird nominees, I guarantee it. (laughs) Just like we did last year. Uh, And it's going to be uh, Jake and Forrest for the most part. (laughs) Well, we're hoping otherwise. We're hoping that... If, for example, we have Carl and Roger right here, we can tell you guys personally you should vote. <laughs> but um, there's going to be, uh, of course, you know, part of the other issue for me has been um, working, uh, working, 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 uh, work full time at one job and have another company that I co founded on top of it. So it keeps me pretty busy. But, um, in a good way. And uh, so while I have not hit all the movies that I really wanted to hit for this uh, nominations process, I've hit a good number. Um, and I can actually, as of last night, with Stephen Kang's Sharks of the Corn, I have officially have a... Nominee yeah. for every slot. You actually watched Sharks in the Corn. I did, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Is that a nominee for the so, work movie? Uh, well, <laughs> well low for budget. a low-budget feature, yeah. Although if we had a worst movie category, <laughs> maybe. Uh, there, there might be. Maybe maybe next year we'll do a category for best worst best movie. Actually, best I worst thought, movie. Uh, Yeah, I was thinking about that this go-round, but we want to go superlative, but you know. (laughs) But anyway, um, so I think that about... uh, uh, Of course, we did do our Puella discussion on our channel, and next, I'm very much looking forward to Slayers. Slayers. Slayers is one of the shows that got me into anime, and the... RPG based on it is one of, is pretty much what got me into RPGs. So, um, very much looking forward to that. Yeah. Oh, and Ron, uh, 
all five seasons are on Hulu. Um, so the first season's the only one we're covering. But if you want, because I know you have access to Hulu, so that might be an easy uh, run in. Yeah, and so before and before he scares you by saying all five seasons, seasons four and five are both half seasons, and they just split them up. I don't. Oh, yeah. uh, I don't ever get scared of. Uh, I watch Supernatural uh, all fifteen seasons. Oh gosh, yeah, that's a and lot. I've seen. Yeah. Uh, I've seen some of the seasons a few times, and I've watched uh, Buffy. It's only seven seasons, but I've watched that about I don't know yeah. seven eight times. Uh, all of them and Zena, I've watched uh, probably seven or eight times. So I, I'm, I'm I'm not afraid of a lot of seasons. I actually enjoy uh, more seasons, unlike some people. Um, uh, the more the Good better, deal. usually. Um, and we're gonna hit some unfamiliar series to all of us uh, for August. So it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, I think I'm. Well, I don't know. I'm probably gonna skip that, and, uh, depending on uh, what's chosen and. I guess I'll look at it and see what it's uh, yeah. what it's about. But um, I don't I'll know. Read the description. You never know what will be chosen. Um, yeah. Very what, true. What about you, Roger? Well, my name is Roger. I have a certain amount of uh, uh, anime collecting and certain amount of manga collecting and some other other things I collect. I also happen to uh, run a a small Facebook group called Animes and Collection Company. We, we specialize in large-scale anime figure and manga collecting. Um, so if you've ever been around Facebook and you want to take a gander at it, you can come on by. If you have, if you have a big enough collection, we may be able to let you in. Thank you for allowing me to, to visit you know, the, the movies galore and uh, and Septim Sinvers of the world. I'm more like a ghost member, <laughs> I guess, yeah. now. I'm more of an anime specialist, and I, I got handed my behind uh, too many times on the movie thing. So I thought I could, like, sure, I could just watch some movies, and uh, yeah, no, <laughs> I got, I got, I got, I got slackered. So uh, I'm just happy with the anime. So thank you all for allowing me to at least come back and talk to you all every so often. Hey, always welcome at any time that you find a movie or something that you want to hit on. For sure. Um, so, uh, of course, I'm Septim Sin, Septim Sin vs. the World. We do a lot of physical media stuff. And uh, we had uh, a recent uh, uh, well, uh, film psychoanalysis where I break down a film. I actually, uh, this is my fifth episode, I believe, uh, of this series. I do a film review of it. I review the physical release because it's a physical release channel. Then I... Uh, go from that review and I break the uh, film down scene by scene, talk about it, give it some in-depth uh, looks uh, that you would see normally for bigger budget films for channels like Nostalgia Critic and so on. But uh, uh, these are for films that most would not get that level of treatment. They would get a surface glance at best. But uh, I've got that. I've got an upcoming review I'm working on for Horror Tale 666 Part 2. And then uh, Sharkula, and then I'll be free, free to cover whatever I want. And of course, uh, I'm also on a new podcast that's uh, coming up called Schlockaholics, which is uh, a podcast based off of B movie schlock films. Um, both uh, me, Cody Tudor, and of course, Mo from uh, uh, his channel. Uh, have gotten together and uh, we talk about these types of films. Our first film that we have covered is Axe Grinder. And uh, we got that on uh, his channel right now, which is a uh, Richard Colt home video. But um, we are hoping to have the Shockaholics channel itself up and running in the future. So uh, it's going to be fun. We got three videos filmed for it so far and we've already uh, got our, next two uh film discussions planned so it's going to be really cool oh and we had a bad ben discussion this sunday so uh bad ben uh the way in it's a uh, fun thing on our channel of course uh dave had to duck out but uh he wanted me to go ahead and cover for him so we have uh dave's channel well uh if you haven't figured out uh you're on inside movies galore uh which is a channel where we discuss movies of all sorts uh, be it anime, horror, drama, comedy, all over the part. And we are in the middle of our fifth 
birthday celebration for the channel and this month marks our fifth occasion so it's great to have roger with us uh because you were briefly uh a full-time member so it's great to have you back uh, on the month where we celebrate our fifth birthday as a channel so it's kind of cool as well and this uh we've got much more to go when it comes to this uh, before we go on with our uh, birthday celebration we will uh, talk briefly about his other channel delusions of grandeur where he does uh, other film reviews of a similar nature on sundays and pickup videos where he does some of those on occasion and uh, interviews with directors which he's got a a treasure trove of director interviews on both of these channels that you should check out but our birthday celebration has not come to an end yet we still have another half a year worth of celebrating and partying before our fifth year comes to a close. Uh, so we have been celebrating our full-time members one at a time. And uh, June, we kind of took a mini break to just celebrate the actual fifth anniversary of the show and Dave and Mive's birthdays. But next month, we will be talking about Forrest and his stuff. So we're going to uh, look real quick at that. So we end our uh, discussion in July with the film New York Ninja. <laughs> a versus award contender, actually. Yes, it is. Uh, I got uh, started early on, but didn't get a full release until 2021. So uh, New York Ninja. And then, of course, uh, if we go further back, we hit the classic class of Nukem High. For those who are loving those old trauma classics, the original first film that started it all. Oh, you know it. I'm partial to the uh, newer series where they've got a, a radioactive mutant duck. Oh, punk rock duck. Punk rock duck. And uh, then we uh, move into an even uh, nicer little children's film called The Brave Little Toaster. But next week... We are going to be doing a film that I know Jake has been chomping at the bit to cover for ages. And uh, so I'm sure he and Forrest will have a ball with that one. And that is Salo part two. No, just kidding. Uh, is this Spinal Tap. And These go a, to 11. That's been, a, uh, that's been a long time for us trying to get in on that one. So yep, that's yep. Fun. That's a classic. Look forward to that one. Yeah. <laughs> Cups and cakes. <laughs> but with that being said, I hope you all have enjoyed this uh, particular episode, and we will see you on the next one. Goodbye, all. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.